No Time to Die, the last, the Daniel Craig Bond era, or Universe 2 for James Bond when it comes to movies, because... Connery through through Brosnan were one universe, and Craig was an all-new one that started up. And if you listen to the drama channels, hate channels, whatever you want to call them, this movie is some horrible man hates the garbage, and it's the worst movie ever made, and wee wee, and all that crap, when it's not. I actually like this one better than Skyfall and Spectre. I fell asleep during both of those movies. And this one's longer. What you have to do is, if you have a writer, like if you could actually see me, well, besides having your camera cracked because I'm so fucking blood ugly, or your screen, you'd see me air quoting there. Phoebe Waller-Bridge is not a writer. She is a woke activist. But her writing, air quoting there again, can be viewed as a comical satire of how crappy these people think they are, and how, how these people think they are, and how they see the world. Look at look at the robot in Solo. If you look at it one way, like how she thought it, she thought it was some uber feminist hero character thing. Everybody else, like if you're watching the movie and paying attention to all the other characters. It's a pain in the ass. They all see the robot as a liability, annoying, an asshole. That's how people see these people. That's how everybody sees these feminist people and these diversity people and all these people that want to have all this crap, pushing all this garbage into the movies instead of actually trying to tell the story. So, Bridge writes, air quoting there again, well enough that you can interpret that you... She can interpret her. She can interpret the character her way, which not many people do, or some people do, and then you can interpret it the other way, which is yeah, it's a satire, and it's not even that bad, even if you try to take it as the feminist thing, because she doesn't really do very much, and towards the end she admits that James is better than her, so it's not even that bad. She is annoying, though. The, the new spy. Which, hey, with Bond... This movie's been out for over a month now. I can spoil it. With Bond dead... Well, actually, the internet spoiled it the day afterwards. He then won't be continuing it anyways, because... Hey, sh there's no point in doing a quote-unquote James Bond series with Bond not being alive. It'll be 007, but it won't be James Bond. No one's going to watch it, especially with that character, because that character was annoying. And they played off a lot of the stuff that Bond usually does, like he meets some exotic female, even if she's like a spy and helps him out, he's going to sleep with her eventually. Nah, they played it off as a joke, like, oh, I don't want to sleep. What do you think we're trying? What do you think we're trying to do here? When he gets taken into a closet by a girl to change into a suit for a party they're going to. For a female spy in Cuba, which apparently we have female spies in Cuba. And a funny thing that I noticed over the last uh, couple of or last couple of days, because I haven't reviewed this movie since I, I saw this movie like sun the Sunday it opened. I haven't reviewed it in a while because let's face it, no one really gives a shit about these reviews. But uh, woke Randolph actually says that Felix is always a black guy. In the uh, Sean Connery movies, he was a white guy. Only did I know this because of the uh, "What's the Difference" episode I watched with Sean Co with Doctor No. Because if I'm being honest, I've only really seen the Pierce Brosnan movies and Daniel Craig's. The rest of the Bond films, I know nothing about. I'm guessing Grace only ever watched the the most recent ones. So I believed her. I thought, okay, yeah, Felix is a black guy. It makes sense. You know, American, the guy does the rougher stuff. You know, Bond's supposed to be a World War II era thing, or at least that's what Fleming was. And, you know, we gave the, we gave the Africans the, bat, the crappy jobs, the soldiers and that, so they got stuck with the crappy jobs. 
And what's what's crappier than being a spy? Because it's not some glamorous life. You're going behind enemy territory. You're gonna get caught. You're gonna get beat up. You're gonna get killed. You're gonna get dis disassociated. So a black guy made perfect sense in America because America had a lot of them. They were all trying. They were trying to join this army because you know every man from I think 18 to 30 had to join. And most people don't really give a shit about Felix to begin with, so probably fine if they race swapped up. Although apparently in the books, Felix wasn't in Doctor No, but he was in the movie. He was in the first book. He was in the first book, but not the first, but not the first movie, or not Doctor No. Apparently, because Doctor No is the fifth one. I'm getting off topic there. The movie slows down when it's needed, like not like horrible slow down, like something like Spectre or Skyfall did, where it's to the point where. It slowed down where I just zonked out. I checked out and... <laughs> Either that or I watched those films where I were, when I was dead tired. Which I didn't. I watched Skyfall because I was given it as a gift. of the Blu-ray of it for Easter when it came out. Don't ask me why. I think I recorded the Brosnan movies on DV, off the TV... You know, on a little marathon thing, so my parents thought I really liked James Bond or something, so they got me the newest one. Because I, I liked Casino Royale. For some reason, I remember liking Quantum of Solace, even though everybody said how crappy the movie is, but I'll tell you how much I liked it. I, when I rented it from Blockbuster, that's how long ago it was, I liked it, I returned it, I bought it a couple months down the road for the four movies for $20 thing. I never watched it again. So I'm guessing I probably would have given it a C if I was going to my nowadays grade points. Because I honestly never watched it again. I mean, I guess I could. Like, if I'd actually found all the James, Bo all the Craig James Bond movies on Steelbook that came out at Best Buy, I probably would have watched it over again. Because I originally only wanted Quantum of Solace and Casino Royale. I've only been able to find Spectre and Quantum. Not the other ones. I was going to watch a little marathon of the four before seeing this one. Because I do own Skyfall and Spectre. Obviously, I got given Skyfall as a gift. And Spectre, I got on Black Friday last year. Still had a slipcover. Nice little shiny slipcover of a... Uh, it's kind, of, it's kind of like a shiny metallic, not metallic, uh, what's that thing? Lenticular, there you go, because it goes back and forth between Bond's face and the skeleton mass that he wore. Couldn't think of the word, sorry. Of course, that was a lot since that car accident I was in. But then you, and you hit your head on a steering wheel, it's going to happen. So let's get back to this to me. Uh... I like the score. I think Zimmer did it, if I remember correctly. Not 100% positive. Don't quote me on that. The bad guy wasn't some over-the-top thing, but he also wasn't some extremely grounded and realistic thing. He's kind of the best of both worlds of the classic, air quotes, Bond villain where he's like dopey and it's got like, like no point to his plan. It's just he's doing it to be bad. And the newer ones are just some terrorists or some terrorist organization. And the funniest thing in the world, Remy Malik gave an interview that he did an episode of 24 or something like that, one of those old, one, like NCIS 24, something like that, where he had to play a terrorist because, well, I looked the part because he's Egyptian. And he'll never play a terrorist again. I'll screen my roles. He played Mr. Robot terrorist, and now he's played this guy, a terrorist. Hmm. I guess for the right amount of money, because, uh, well, Mr. Robot was a quote-unquote black hat hacker or hacktivist, or whatever the fuck you want to call it. That show went downhill drastically for me once it went after the first season when they said that when it came out that Mr. Robot was really a part of his, his imagination, his psyche. And the girl he wanted to make out with and screw was really his sister. It's like, what the f? 
Uh, I never watched the fourth season. The third season, I can't remember if I watched, watched it to the end or not. I think I did, but I also think I skipped an episode or two. Because I got really lost. It's like, randomly, they were in a car, people were being shot, like, J Jimmy Woo was cross-dressing as a woman now, it was like, what the fuck is going on? And that's when I said I wasn't going to bother watching a show anymore. That's why I kind of think I skipped, like, episode 8 and 9, I'm not positive, and I didn't care enough to go back and watch them all again. Because I was starting to lose interest anyways with season 2 and 3, it's just there's nothing else on. To get back to this film, let's see. The action set pieces were nice. It was kind of kind of a nice nod to the novels and that that Bond was married. Because in the books he's married. At least I'm pretty positive he is. Because there's some old movie where he gets married and then his wife gets shot. And, he, and that's when he becomes the heartless man. So, it's a nice little callback. Of course, this wife didn't get shot. She got to live on with Bond's daughter. But it's kind of stupid for her to lie, to lie to him, saying it's not his kid. When, just tell him it's, your, tell him it's his. I mean, yeah, it's going to make him feel bad that you didn't call him or anything, because you could have easily gone to MI5 and said, hey, I have James's child, uh, you know, to get in contact with him. Because it's not like it's some big secret where he worked. And it's not like... She wasn't working for MI5. She was a psychiatrist for him. She could have easily gone up to 003, 00 whatever. Hey, do you know where James is retired to? Yeah, he has a daughter. I want him to meet him. Because even if he doesn't, even if he doesn't like you, he might may still want to meet his kid. And the only reason he didn't like her is because he thought he betra she betrayed him when she didn't. After a, like, two-minute conversation, he realized she didn't betray him, and everything was fine again. So they would have had an awkward conversation. Hey, it wasn't me. It was this other guy. It was this people from Spectre doing it. Or at least I thought it was from Spectre, and then it turned out it was Rainy Malik. And no, I don't remember his name. I barely remember people's names. I know, let alone movie characters I've only seen once a month ago. Uh, I was kind of shocked he died. I was thinking there was like, because they had him pick up his his daughter's little bunny that she that she dropped at some point, and I thought okay he's gonna give it to her and he's gonna die of like his blood loss or something. I knew he been shot so many times there's no way he's gonna live. But I thought he's gonna get off, yeah I thought he, at least he's gonna get off the island. And give the daughter money back or something, and then like they'd like flash forward to like them introducing a new 007, which is James's daughter, when she comes walking in the room like um I don't know Jillian or Bond Jillian Bond or some shit like that, and like oh, the bunnies on the table or something with a picture of James or something like that, but no, because that's like a really stupid idea, and you know you know style of Hollywood these days, the dumbest things you can think of, that's what's gonna be in the movie. Well, I watched the movie again. Well, obviously, I, when I got out of the theaters, I actually liked it enough that I actually pre-ordered the Steelbook thing of it. Because apparently it's supposed to be some rare thing. Because it's like, I think like the other Bond films, it's not going to be in the stores. And I liked it enough. And that's it, I guess. And I'll probably get like maybe two or three views, but it tops ten. <sighs> Thanks for watching. If anybody did, and hey, see you next time. Well, listen to you next time. I don't actually show my face because I don't want to break people's cameras and have people sue me because my computer screen broke because of your face. How ugly you are! And that kind of shit. Have a good one.